Hello, and welcome back to Tea Talks. Well, I'm going to call this Tea Talks for the foreseeable future. I'd um, like to say thank you very much in the last video comments. Um, it had only been published less than two hours, I think, and there were two comments in already. So thank you very much. Um, David Potts, um, yeah, replied and said, Boomer in Bosnia. I suppose that's because, yeah, I'm a, I'm a baby boomer from the year that I was born. And he also liked <clears throat> the comments you can see in the last video where I said, I'm not really worry, worried about the wanky comments, which like what I really meant there was people who are going to be negative at all. Um, it used to bother me a lot. To be honest with you, it used to bother me a lot. And I got really affected by it on, I don't know, about half a dozen occasions where I just wanted to give everything up. But I think now, um, at the age that I am, that I'm not going to worry about that anymore. In fact, from some research I've done recently, this is now the third act. Apparently, you have three acts in your life. And um, act three is the last bit. And nobody knows how long that is going to be, right? So this is my, I'm in the third act. So, yeah, follow along as, uh, as I go through the third act. I wanted to talk about things that affect me and talk about things in a more relaxed way, hopefully not a rambly way so that you, you don't want to watch. But on my <clears throat> blog, an Englishman in the Balkans .com. Please subscribe. You can subscribe for free. Um, a recent post was about stray dogs. And I want to talk about that again because it, it it's really got to me and I've it's really roasty toasty hot outside, so I've had to switch off the air con, otherwise you wouldn't hear me, right? But outside we have a little paddock just outside the door of my office, where Predrax and I used some fencing that we bought for another project. And we've made a, uh, a temporary paddock, um, which is part of the garden downstairs. And where we had a large kennel, it's called a box here, made for Cooper, our dog that died some, some time ago. We loved Cooper lots. He had a very full life till. 12 and a half years, uh, but he never stayed in the box. He was a, a house dog. But we've made this compound, if you like, this paddock um, for four puppies, because I think about five nights ago now, and you can read the details about it and the problem with stray dogs in Bosnia Herzegovina in the blog post. And I will put that link below in, in this video, right? But anyway, this isn't the first time that we've had animals dropped off with us. In fact, uh, at the, as I speak now, we have two dogs and seven cats who are rescued. <clears throat> the dogs are house dogs, although they run around the large property. We've got here the large garden. Um, we do have another three, four puppies, but I'm not including those at the moment. And we like having them. We, we don't understand the mentality of people that drop them off. And in Bosnia Herzegovina, where I always say the people are so lovely and they are, they're hospitable. There is a sort of feeling, especially in, I don't know what segment of society it is, where they, they, they treat animals like crap, like shit, basically. So five nights ago, four or five nights ago, I think I remember hearing a car pulling up a bus stop that we have near where we live. It's not a normal bus stop for a daily or a weekly regular bus service. It's, it operates during school time and it's there to pick up the kids because it's a six kilometer walk to the nearest school, right? So thank goodness the municipality has provided that and the, the bus shelter is there for inclement weather, which I think is, is laudable. But it's where people stop in the middle of the night and they just either throw them out or they dump them in a box or whatever. And it's not something that happens so irregularly. It's almost 
regularly, right? So I'm not saying it happens every day or every week, but there is a cycle to it. And so I think I heard this car, but as we woke up, there was this um, like yapping of a puppy. And when I went outside, there was indeed a puppy in the garden. Now, I don't know how he or she got in. I think it's a he, actually, um, because we'd made sure that there were no holes. But uh, as I was looking at this dog, Tamara came out and there was more sound. And in the end, there were a litter of four of them. Now, we can't keep those four. Uh, and we really, really don't want to um, keep the system going that we've just been landed with, with. In other words, find a box, put them in the drive them to another village or drive them into the forest uh, and dump them off there and they take their chances. We don't like doing that. Um, I live my life through Buddhist principles. I'm not like a huge Buddhist with, you know, dietary considerations and offerings and all that, but I like the principles very much. And I do believe in karma. And I do believe that when you come round again, you, you're going to get it. So in one way, I'm selfish by saying, well, if I live my life correctly, then I'll have a, get a better time next time. That's not what, really what it's about. I think you should be um, good to both humans and, and to animals. I think it's an ethical thing, really. And we'll be talking about this in a future video, but having traveled around the world to places like Ecuador and Ethiopia, um, and here as well, to be honest, uh, I've become a much more tolerant person. So we've got these four puppies and it took a whole day, to be honest with you, to try and find a shelter for them. There ain't. Nobody's interested, to be honest. Um, the one in Banja Luka, allegedly, I think there's two, but one of them, um, it's that they, they, you might as well shoot them before putting them in there because it's going to be awful for them. And the organisations here don't work together. All right. So if somebody's got money and they've got a dog shelter, they're interested in their own thing. Our municipality doesn't have one. So to try and go to another municipality uh, has been a struggle. However, um, we got in touch with a number of people. Uh, Dogs Trust, Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, tries to fund uh, shelters, but there isn't anything to fund in, in our municipality. And then there's another organisation called Wagwag, which I want to do a podcast about uh, in the future, and it will be on an Englishman in the Balkans, not here, but somewhere else. Um, and they are lawyers and they are trying to get the law changed. But it is an uphill struggle um, and it's going to take some time. But through Wagwag, uh, we were put in touch with a lady who may or may not do things. Um, Tamara is a wonderful communicator. And at the end of her discussion on the phone, we were able to take these four puppies to the neighbouring border town of Gradishka where they were vaccinated, uh, they got anti-worm tablets and they got something against ticks. It's a huge problem, ticks, where we are here. And so we have to look after them for 30 days. Right now, I don't mind that. Yes, there is a cost with food. Yes, there is a cost with waking up in the middle of the night and these tiny creatures are barking. But we're prepared to go with that. And if everything runs smoothly, these little puppies will... Um, go into a shelter in Gradishka because they are vaccinated and everything um, and they are a month old or more and then from there there's a possibility that they'll move on to Germany as the person that sponsors all this is a German NGO. Somebody from Gradishka I think moves to Germany and has this love of dogs and, and wants to do this. So at the moment the dogs are outside um, they're safe. They seem to be uber happy. And one of our dogs is trying to get used to them. We have bitches, female dogs. But nevertheless, at the moment, the situation here is stable. And all things being equal, fingers crossed, 
um, at the end of the 30 days, they will go to somewhere, to a shelter that is not bad, and then we'll move on. But it comes back to why do people do this? Now, I know there's cruel people in every country in the world, and it's not Bosnia-Herzegovina. In my home country of the United Kingdom, there are some terribly cruel people. Um, I think a few years ago, I read a, a story in the in the online press about a young man who kicked a cat over the rugby post as if it was a, a rugby ball. He was sentenced for that and punished for that. But it doesn't seem to be any real punishment here. And there is an excuse that I'm hearing more and more and more is, well, they should be shot. We're a hunting nation. They should be shot. They shouldn't be shot. They shouldn't be shot. What does that mean? That um, a homeless person in, in Bosnia-Herzegovina should be shot? I don't think anybody would tolerate that. So why is it with animals? Is it that with this sort of attitude that we've all got this somewhere underneath us? I was reading a story about the First World War where civilised men went against civilised men. And when they were fighting uh, in the trenches and in, in no man's land, they were doing the most horrendous barbaric, um, terrible things to each other. How does that happen with humans? And why, um, when you have animals like our rescues, are vaccinated and are, say, snipped, okay, so that they can't reproduce? We've got a pack of dogs running around in the village at the moment. I think there's eight. I don't know how many are dogs and how many are bitches. It doesn't matter. But one thing, as sure as uh, apples fall off the apple trees every year, uh, there's going to be more puppies. So why isn't there money put aside? I mean, there is uh, endemic corruption in this country. And that's the way it is. But maybe the corrupt people could just donate a little bit of the backhander that they get to organisations to chip and spay. I think that's the word, the phrase, chip and spay. I know in Banja Luka in the city, dogs are going around with... Um, uh, little marks on their ear that they're a city dog, they've uh, been spayed uh, and they've been vaccinated. So hopefully, even with them just begging off the street and getting scraps, they might have a semi-reasonable life, although I don't think so. But when they pass, that'll be the end of it and they will not be able to replicate. Um, ours here are the same. But for the duration of their life, we try here, with our pets as they are now, to give them a quality of life. And why? Because I think it's the right thing to do. Tamara definitely thinks it's right to do. And I always think now, as I'm in my third act, and after all, this is what we're talking about, is that of all the things I've seen in my life going around the world, the tolerance and the inhumanity that I've seen um, There'll be a bit more about that in a future video. I came to, I'll tell you more about my story about how I came here. But in 1993, I was here just for a few short weeks uh, near Tomislavgrad, and there was the conflict on. And man's inhumanity to man was awful. And yet, there are people telling me all sorts of stories. And these are from men who never fought. But they really think that you know, you should have a real go at each other until you've done it. You know, when you've done it, then you have a different um, outlook. When you've seen it, when you've experienced it, you have a different outlook. So, yeah, stray dogs. It's going to be a link, as I said, in the bottom, in the show notes or somewhere where you see see this video. I don't like it at all. Um, at my age, I should be able to say it's nothing to do with me, but I can't do that. And I think the older that you get, the more in touch with what life is all about, whether you're a human or an animal, right? If the birds in the trees want to fight each other for food and somebody dies, that's nature. I'm, I'm not against that. 
on the savannah of Africa. The lion has to eat. The antelope is a beautiful creature, but if the antelope can't outrun the, the lion, for whatever reason, that's how it goes. But yeah. I said I didn't want to ramble. I obviously have rambled. Uh, I should apologise, but I'm not, because you know that's coming. So that's this edition of Tea Talk. Um, I should have been drinking out of my mug. Um, I'll finish it off now. I will I will drink during the next one. So yes, that's this edition of Tea Talk. Um, thank you very much indeed for watching. If you've got any comments, please put them down below. It would be really interesting to have a discussion. Uh, if you're one of the people that are seeing this and you want to make a wanky comment, uh, trolls, in my view, make wanky comments. I know how to deal with that. And as I said last time, I'll see you again soon.